The automotive industry is undergoing a profound change, and one of the drivers of that change is in-vehicle operating systems and edge computing. Here to tell us more is Francis Chow, VP and GM of in-vehicle operating systems and edge at Red Hat. Francis, thanks for being with us today. Terrence, thank you for having me today. What are some of the trends that you're starting to see in general in the industry? Well, I, I think uh, what's really interesting is we're seeing multiple industries that are uh, getting to a point that the way they've been designing e electronic systems are no longer sustainable. Uh, the end markets are demanding more capabilities, which translate to higher complexity in software. And the way these systems have been designed in the past, they are typically purpose-built. They are very tightly integrated with software and hardware, and they're not very flexible to adapt these new technologies. This, the industries, right, trying to figure out, okay, how do we solve this problem so that we can adopt new things like AI, innovations in a, in a faster manner. The interesting thing is we are seeing that many of them, including like manufacturing, automotive, retail, they are looking at open source as a potential model to adopt new technologies and change the way they design things. Now, if you look at some of these more specific industry trends, uh, I think in manufacturing, we are seeing uh, some companies are looking at, okay, how do I move my business model to a more SaaS-based and subscription-based? Now, if they want to do that, they will have to uh, look at changing the way they design the systems from more hardware-oriented to software-defined. Uh, in automotive, we are seeing every company is trying to figure out, okay, how do I implement uh, advanced driver assistance systems, autonomous driving, uh, more personalized infotainment systems, digital cockpit, better driving experience, all these require highly complex software to be implemented. And retail, I think uh, a lot of change has been happening since the pandemic, right? Consumers are changing their buying behavior and we continue to see more innovations coming in into retail, retail stores in terms of how they adopt like better self-checkout experience, how do they uh, leverage computer visions to uh, prevent lost uh, in the store, you know, that kind of thing. Now in telco, uh, last but not least, um, we, I, th I think uh, the telecom market is actually uh, pretty interesting to us because they have started adopting open source about 10 years ago. Uh, now a lot of service providers are looking at ways on uh, more value added services, not just to consumer, but also to businesses. So I think the intersection between uh, the telecom market and the enterprise market could offer a lot of growth in the coming, coming years. And um, I think what we've experienced in how the telecom market adopt open source could be a guiding post on how other industry that we're seeing on the verge of adopting open source, how, what are they gonna do in the coming years? In light of the environment that you just described, what is Red Hat's strategy for edge computing? Our strategy is to meet where our customers and partners are on their journey of adopting new technologies. What we want to do is to leverage open source to help accelerate their innovation. Traditionally, uh, Red Hat's been very focused on enterprise IT market, and our approach is always more um, product focused and product oriented. I think for Edge, we have to change the way we approach the market by being more solution oriented. So one key part of our strategy is to work with our partners to create more complete solutions that we can bring to market together. And certainly, um, there are also portfolio gaps. So we're also looking at what kind of new product we have to work on. One example uh, was that we are looking at, to, we are looking to build a Linux-based operating system uh, for in-vehicle use cases and that got to be optimized for automotive use cases, that got to be safety certified. So we, we're building these things depending on the market demands. With AI at the top of so many conversations, how would you describe the opportunity to bring AI and edge together? Personally, I think the intersection of AI and edge, it's where the growth is in the coming years. The reason why I say that is, if you just kind of listen to what the media has been saying in, in, the, in the recent uh, weeks, there's been a lot of talks about large language models, AI training. That, I think, is the first phase of this AI innovation. 
the next phase will be, okay, where are you going to deploy these AI models? And I think it's going to be more at the edge. And the reason why I think it's, it's going to happen is, is there are a couple of trends that is happening for, to enable that. First one is uh, a lot of these uh, AI models, they are shrinking and being optimized in a very fast pace. I'm talking about 10 times more you know, by annual, uh, on an annual basis. So as these AI models are shrinking in a smaller size, it's easier for them to be deployed at the edge. The second reason for that to happen is the device at the edge are getting more capable pretty quickly. As an example, if you uh, purchase a top of the line laptop today, you can have like 64 gigabyte of memory and a GPU in the laptop. And that's pretty capable in terms of running AI models. Now, the third reason why I think uh, uh, AI at the edge is, is going to happen um, is that a lot of data is actually generated at the edge. Not only it costs a lot of time and money to move the data from the edge to the core or data center to process, analyze for AI, and then send it back to the edge for decisions. I think it makes a lot more sense to actually do all the work where the data is, which is the edge. The industry is changing profoundly in the past few years where partnerships have become really valuable to move forward. How do you see that landscape evolving and is Red Hat partnering with others to, to really move the network transformation forward? Oh, absolutely. Um, I think, let's just kind of talk about automotive as an example. As the industry is trying to move to a more of a software-defined vehicle, paradigm, the relationship between the ecosystem are changing. As an example, a lot of the automakers are trying to take more control on how they design the software. So their relationship with the suppliers are changing. Uh, silicons are becoming more powerful. A lot of silicon companies are trying to build up more software capabilities. So our role is to try to adapt to these changing landscapes and try to leverage what we're good at, which is open source. And the advantage of, of open source is not just the fact that the code is open, it's, that, it's also that we can work very openly with the whole ecosystem. Now, in the previous world where everything is proprietary, it could take weeks to negotiate the contract or get stuff done, or you want to do a, a joint venture, it's going to take years to negotiate. With open source, we can actually start working together tomorrow, right? If you have a bug, anyone can fix the bug and we can pull it downstream as, as a support the product um, in the future. So it's a way more flexible model to enable innovation, to allow the whole industry to move, to move faster. Francis, thank you so much for these insights and we appreciate your time. Thank you, Karen, for having me. Very nice talking to you.